Anthony Castrovince from MLB.com joining us now. And we want to extend Anthony and his wife our congrats and best wishes for their new arrival, a baby boy, correct, Anthony? That's correct. Sam James Castrovince, seven pounds, 10 ounces, oh. a lean, mean, Baby machine, row oh, flow. I love that. And he's, uh, I think he's got what it takes to win a championship. He's got that look in his eye. I like him a lot. Oh, that's great. He Wait did. a minute. He was born I, I this say, morning. He was born here in Cleveland, so he was born this morning. I'm telling you. And this kid came to play. He came a little early. So he's that's, a gamer. You are a hence, gamer. Uh, hence Anthony. the uh, scheduling here. You got to be, got to be. Well, my wife's the real guy. I, I didn't have to give birth, so I didn't have to do anything. But, uh, yeah. He got a little emotional when I told him the Indians squandered a, a great Zach Plesac start last night. But uh, overall, you know, he's he's hey, calm and collected. So that's exactly. Good. Well, tell him to get used to it. He's gonna he's a Cleveland fan, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this week in weird. What's been weird so far about home field advantage this season, Anthony? Well, in 2020, everything is weird, right? I mean, everything in the world, everything in baseball in particular. And so why should home field be any different? Now, of course, this is the year with cardboard cutouts in the stands and, uh, you know, piped in sounds. And uh, the, the Toronto Blue Jays are based in Buffalo, but playing their home opener in Washington, D.C. So home field advantage really does not exist uh, the way we're accustomed to seeing. Historically, home teams win 54 percent of the time. Uh, last year was actually more like 53 percent of the time. So a little bit of a dip there, but a, a much bigger dip so far this year. It's 49.4 percent. Wow. Home teams are just 41 and 42. Now, it does include the aforementioned Blue Jays last night losing at home, but on the road to the Nats who were on the road, but at home. So I guess you could call it even, but just something to watch. This is kind of like a, a science experiment we're seeing here in 2020. You know, what is the impact of the home crowd? And it's not just in the ways that you think, you know, players performing to a different level because of the backing of the home crowd. It's also just those borderline ball strike calls. You know, I'd be curious to see the data on that at season's end. Um, you know, how much did those go the way of the home team relative to past years with the home crowd? I will say I do like the piped in noise. I love when the fake crowd gets upset at a borderline strike call <laughs> that goes against the home team. I think that's a nice touch. I love that. I think what, what should be added is when the home team is getting blown out, the cardboard cutouts should begin making their way to the exits. I think I would like to see that. <laughs> hey, uh, Absolutely. What, it could happen. Yeah, it could what, happen. What Just was get weird a, a drawstring to pull them back. Yeah, what, what was weird about the Rays this week? Uh, G-Man Choi. This, this might be one of the greatest things we see all season where the Blue Jays, Choi struggles against left-handed pitching. The Blue Jays go to a lefty, so Choi goes to a righty in that he goes to himself. Uh, now, he did switch hit for a brief period in AAA. He went 6 for 14 at the AAA level as a right-handed batter, but it didn't stick. He didn't stick as a switch hitter. 251st big league game, he decides to give this a whirl. First at bat, he strikes out. Second at bat, he goes deep with a 110 mile an hour home run, his hardest hit home run of his career. Oh my God. Uh, first stat cast. So, pretty incredible there, stuff there from Choi. I don't know, this could be a, a total fluke, and this could be something he doesn't go to that well very often, but. This guy with a sub 600 OPS against left-handed pitching his career, you kind of get labeled a platoon guy in that scenario. So maybe this is an opportunity for him to claw himself back uh, away from that label and, and show some viability against left-handed pitching. Give us something weird about the Astros, Anthony. Well, uh, the Astros, uh, they have more youngsters than I just saw in the maternity ward. They've already had eight rookies uh, make their debut here in 2020. Seven of those guys are pitchers. And that was just in the first five games of the season. Yes, that is a record for most debuts in the first five games of the season. The previous high was five. It was by the 1962 Cubs and the 1998 Marlins. What do those two teams have in common? They stunk. They both mm. lost uh, well north, well north of 100 games. So the difference for the Astros is that the Astros are a good team, or at least projected to be a good team. They've managed to go three and three despite all the injury adversity to you know, Justin Verlander and Brad Peacock and Ryan Presley. They've lost a lot of key figures on their pitching staff, but been able to patch together because the, the seven pitchers who have made their debut have combined for a 1.23 ERA. So pretty impressive work. They even have a guy named Scrub, and yes. Scrub has even performed for them. So if you've got a guy named Scrub doing well for you, you something's going right. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that last name, and I was like, wow, that is, that's amazing. Speaking of amazing, Mike Trout always doing amazing things, but what did he do that was weird? 
What he did was weird was he swung at a 3-0 pitch. Uh, he had not done that in the Trump administration. He had not that done. Uh, we had not seen that from Mike Trout since 2016. And not only did he swing at the 3-0 pitch, but he hammered it. Uh, and that was 88 miles an hour down the middle from Mike Fires. And, uh, you know, so you give that to Mike Trout, you're really tempting him to swing for the first time in a long time. And he did. And it just got me thinking about, okay, now, who are the active players with the most plate appearances ending uh, and a 3-0 count uh, without a home run. Number one, Robinson Cano. Mm. You got Carlos Santana, Ryan Braun. Cargo's on the list. Eric Hosmer, Daniel Murphy. These are pretty good hitters uh, who now have to uh, make like Trout and, uh, you know, pull, pull the trigger there. Obviously, Trout's going to have the green light. It's one of the very few things we haven't seen him do at the big league level, and he finally did it. So that was cool to see. Awesome. some interesting names on that board. Hey, Anthony, we appreciate the dime. Once again, uh, yeah. our best wishes and congratulations on your new arrival.